Recently I've had a few people bugging me about trying out a third party Discord client and today we're going to try one out. So this is a project by the name of Cordless. It is a terminal based Discord client. Now, before we get into the actual application, there is one thing I need to tell you. Technically, third party Discord clients are against the TOS. So if your account gets banned, do not come to me saying, oh my account got banned. It is technically against the TOS, however Discord doesn't really enforce their TOS properly. And I don't really know of many people who have got banned for this. So, you probably won't, but if you do, that is entirely on you. Now that the disclaimer is out of the way, let's jump right into it. So this right here is the GitHub page, so let's see if we can find what the application actually looks like. So this is roughly what it looks like. Now it'll look a little bit different for me just because my terminal theme is a bit different, but the layout will be the same. So if we go a bit further down, we can see how to install it. So being on Linux, we can install it as a snap. But if you don't like snaps and you're on an Arch based distro, you can also install it from the AUR. Now, there's also the option to install it on Windows as well. So on Windows, you can install it with Scoop. Or if you're on macOS, you can install it from Brew. Or if you're on anything else, sadly, you're going to have to install it with GoGet. I don't think there are packages for Debian or anything like that, or at least there's not official packages. So if you're on anything else, then you're going to have to install it with this line right here, or you can just manually grab the source like this. And it does have some optional dependencies. So if you're running an X server and you want to be able to copy and paste, you'll need to have Xclip installed. And if you're a Wayland user and you want to do the same thing, you'll need to have WL Clipboard installed. So let's just go over to my terminal and go through the installation process. So I'm on Arch Linux, so I'm just going to do it through the AUR. If I just go yay dash s cordless dash git. Now it's cordless dash git, not just cordless. And we just run this now and give it a second. Cool, I've already got it installed, so I'll just go through all of the prompts. I don't really need to care about this. It's just going to reinstall it for me. But once all of this is done, you'll have the application installed. The package was called cordless-git, but the actual application itself is just called cordless. So we can just run cordless from our terminal, and when you first open it up, it won't take you automatically to this screen. What it's gonna do is prompt you to log in. Now, there's two different ways you can log in. You can either log in with a bot token, or you can log in with your account. If you wanna do the bot token method, you can see how that works on the GitHub page right here, but I just wanna log in with my regular account. The bot token method would be more secure because it wouldn't give the application full access to your account, but it's just a Discord account. I don't really care about it that much. If you do care about security though, I would recommend going through that method. Now, once you're logged in, the first thing you're going to want to do is probably come over to the key binding screen because the default key bindings are kind of garbage. So I'm going to be talking about the key bindings that I use. I'll talk about what they actually do. So if you want to update your key bindings to match mine, or if you want to take my configuration file from my GitHub page, you can also do that as well. But I'm not going to be using most of the default bindings just because they're really annoying to work with. And there's a lot of little things about this application that are kind of annoying. I still think it's a really good tool, but I'm probably not gonna be using it myself. So anyway, now that we've moved on from that, one thing you might notice if your terminal has mouse support is you can actually click on these different windows, which if you're gonna do that, you probably shouldn't be using a terminal application, but it is always nice to see that, that is a thing you can do. Obviously, the way you're supposed to be moving around is with key bindings. So my key bindings are to move to this window right here. You'd press Alt-G because this is your guild list or your server list. If you want to jump to the chat list, you can press Alt-C. If you want to jump to the chat window, you can press Alt-B. If you want to jump to the message window, you can press Alt-M. And if you want to jump to your PMs, you can press Alt-P. So let's just jump into a server. Now, you can scroll through this list by either using your arrow keys or by searching. Now, you don't have access to Vim keys. And the reason you don't have access to Vim keys is because as soon as you start typing in here, it's basically gonna start trying to do a search. So if it did have Vim key support, you wouldn't be able to search for J and K. However, a lot of applications do manage to get around this limitation. And that is by having a normal mode and a searching mode. So in NNN, for example, you can move up and down with your Vim keys. And then when you enter search mode, then you can start searching for stuff. This application doesn't do that, so you just don't have access to using Vim keys, which is annoying, but I guess I can get used to it. So let's just jump into my server. And before we jump into a channel, you might have noticed when we jumped into the server, it automatically focused us on the channel list. So that is just a nice little thing to see. 
And let's say we want to jump down to programming. We can just press enter on this and this has now opened up the programming channel and then it's automatically focuses on the message window down here. So let's just say we want to send a message. So all we have to do now is just type something in. So this is a message for a video. And let's say that once we send this, we realize, oh, we made some sort of mistake in it. There's a couple of ways we can go and edit this. If it was just the last message we sent that we want to edit, all we have to do now is press up and this will bring back the message into an edit mode. So let's say we just want to add like a full stop to it. And we just press enter again. And that has now edited that message. Now you might notice there's something funky going on with this message right now. Clearly it's not showing what we had just added to it. If I press up again, this is what the message actually looks like. And this is what the message does look like to everyone else. But for whatever reason, from time to time, some things will just get jumbled up in this application, especially when new posts come in. So I think there might be some problem with actually updating what's on the screen. So you'll see there's some random letters off to the side here and there's this big S here. And I'm not really sure what the cause of those are, but they'll happen a bit more the longer you use the application. So if I press Control K now, you'll notice those Gs are here. And also there's some floating brackets here. And I don't know what the cause of this is. They don't seem to ever go away until you actually go past them. So I think there's a problem with this application actually updating what's on the screen. But moving past that for a bit, there is another way we can go and edit the message as well. So if I just press escape in here, that will take us back to the main screen. If I press Alt B, that will take us into the chat window. All we have to do now is scroll up until we actually see our message. And as you can see, the text actually has gone back to normal now. And if we press E on here, this will then actually bring that text into our actual edit window. The reason why you can do that is because let's say you want to go edit a message from way longer ago. You can't actually keep scrolling up. If you keep pressing up, it's just going to load in whatever the current message is. I would like to see it be sort of like a message history thing, where if I press up, it'll take me to my most recent message, and then up again, the second most recent, third most recent, fourth most recent, so on and so forth. I think that would actually be really useful to see. And you might have seen me just cancel out the message before. So if we want to cancel out the edits, all we have to do is press escape. And that will just clear out the changes without actually modifying anything. But let's say we want to actually delete a message. Now, there isn't actually a dedicated button for deleting a message. The way that you delete a message is basically you select the message. Let's say our most recent one. So I just press up. And if we just select everything in the message and then just delete it and then just repost it like this. Now you can see it'll prompt us to delete the message and we can select abort or delete and we're going to select delete and that has now deleted that message. Now, I don't know why there's not a dedicated delete button. That seems like a bit of a weird thing to not include, but there's not a dedicated delete button. So you have to do it through this method. We can also do replies and quotes as well. So if we just go back up to this window here and let's say we want to reply to goat here, all we have to do is press R and that will then say, Basically, we're going to reply to this person. We can also search for their name like you would normally do if you're just regularly using Discord. So if we do at, and let's say we want to look up, I don't know, Aiko. And as you can see, as you start typing in the name, it'll filter that out. And as I said, you can also do a quote. So if I press Alt B again, go back up to the chat. And let's say I want to quote this message from Aiko here. All I have to do here is just press Q on that. That will take us back to the message window and basically get us set up to post a quote. And if you just press escape now, that'll clear out that window. So escape will work to cancel any changes and also to clear out the message window. Now there are a few minor things that are missing from this application. So you can go and read a spoiler message by just pressing delete on it, but there's no easy way to mark your current message as being a spoiler message. It's not a big deal. You can still manually write out the spoiler message, but it would be nice to see a way to just easily do that with a single key binding. You also can't very easily go and post emotes. Now, regular emojis are fine because they're just Unicode symbols. But as for the Discord emotes, unless you know the link directly to it, there's no way to easily post that. So even if I was to just type in a square bracket, it doesn't bring up a list of the emotes that are available to your account, which is annoying. I guess it's not a big deal because you're not going to see them anyway. But for the people who are just using the regular Discord client, it would be nice to be able to also interact in that way as well. And because you don't have access to emotes, there's no way to go and actually react to messages as well. As you'll notice, none of the messages in here actually have reacts to them. If we just go over to the uh, announcements, there are actually a couple in here that actually do have some reacts on them. But within this client, you can't actually see them and you can't actually add any reacts yourself.
Also, if you need to administrate a server, there's basically no access to administration tools outside of the ones that you could do through bot commands. So even though there's this list off to the side here, and we can get to that by pressing Alt-U, if I was to select a user, like let's say we select Super Cosman, and I just press Enter on his name, nothing happens here. So even though there's this user list here, it doesn't really do much outside of just seeing which users are currently in the server. Even though you're using a terminal Discord client, you probably still want to be able to see when someone posts an image. And there is a way we can actually go about doing that. So if I just go over to a server that I know has an image in it, go into the general chat here, and as you can see, this message right here has an image in it. So if I just press O on this message, so select that message, press O on it, and what it's going to do is try to open up that image within Feh. Now, I don't have Feh installed, but you can configure it. It's just not listed within the help page. So if I just go over to where the config is actually located, so in my .config folder, within the cordless folder, there'll be a file in here called config.json. And basically, the line you're going to want to modify in here is your image viewer line. So I'm going to change this over to SXIV, and then I'll cut back to when I'm actually back to where I was. Okay, now that I've got the image selected again, if I just press O now, you'd expect it to work. But it doesn't. Because for whatever reason, when I change it from being fair, now I no longer get the error message to say that the program's not installed, because I do have SXIV installed. The image viewer just doesn't work now. However, it did work when I was using fair. So maybe there's a problem using SXIV. I don't know what that problem would be though. Maybe it's trying to add some options to it that SXIV doesn't have. I'm not really sure what it's doing there. And one other thing I probably should mention is the command mode. So if we just press Alt full stop, that is the default binding for it. And I just press man now. This brings up basically a list of all of the different commands this application has. So let's see for, I don't know, the chat view. So what can we do in the chat view? Basically what this is going to do is show you a bunch of things about like how to actually use the application. So this shows you the bindings for that. Now this doesn't update as you actually modify the bindings. So if you've modified any of the bindings, basically all of the help in here becomes pretty much useless, but there is something that actually might be helpful and that's for the configuration. So this basically shows you what every single option within the configuration file actually does and also what the valid values for that file actually will be. And the other useful one is if we do man commands. So this will show you all of the actual commands this thing actually has. So in here, there's a couple of cool things you can do. You can do things like, say, set two-factor authentication. You can set yourself a nickname. You can get some information about a server. You can leave and join that server. You can even create a new server. I don't really know why you'd want to create a server from here because you don't have any administration tools, but you can do it. You can also get some information about a user, about your friends. You can send a file. You can get your custom status. You can set your custom status. So let's just go status dash get. And we should be able to see what our current status is. So mine is discount Luke Smith and it shows us the little emoji I have on it as well. And you can also run the manual command on any of the commands in here as well. So if we just run man user dash set, we can see everything we can do with user set and it'll show you all of the options for that. It's sort of like a miniature shell inside your already existing shell, which I think is, it's kind of neat albeit a little bit less useful than the official Discord client, but it is nice to see that you can still do a lot of this stuff from this client as well. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to mention for Cordless today. Obviously, I could do an entire video talking about the command mode, and maybe I'll do that. But what I wanted to say is that, personally, I'm not a big fan of this application. I think it's cool, and I think it's really cool that people actually do have these third-party Discord clients that are sometimes even more customizable than the official client because the official one, it's sort of lacking in that regard. You have a light theme, you have a dark theme, and that's about it. But when it comes to these third-party clients, they're usually way more open with what you can do, and that's kind of the reason why people actually use them. So while I'm not going to use it myself, I'm not going to say that you shouldn't use it. Obviously, keeping in mind the TOS issues, if your account does get banned, that's kind of on you. But if you do want to try out a third-party Discord client and you want to use one from your terminal, this might be a pretty good option to choose. And before I go, I want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, Montazar, Peter, Dave, Rode, Tony Donald, Oculari, and Zilver. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use on this channel or anything else you want, and I've got a small kickback for it. Also, remember to go check out my podcast. That is Tech of a T, available on Library and YouTube, and 
anywhere you listen to podcasts for the audio version. Also remember to go check out this channel, also available on Library, BitTube, and also BitChute. And remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.